Good morning, dear students. Welcome to SDR online classes. Today, uh, let us study about the one more lesson of SSLC, a subject of English. That is the second lesson, the elixir of life, which is written by Sir C. V. Raman. I think you might have heard this name in, in your previous classes. This is one of the greatest scientists, and we can also say that we can also say that he was one of the great physicists. Okay, and he was very much interested in the subject of science, especially in physics. As soon as we heard his name, one thing comes to our mind that is the Raman effect. Okay, this is one of his greatest discovery and for this he was awarded the Nobel Prize in the year of 1930. And then even the Indian government of India also, government of India was awarded him with the greatest award Bharat Ratna. And also Soviet Union was awarded him with international Lenin Prize that is during the year of 1957. Okay, and he was died in the year of 1970. This is a brief introduction about Dr. Sir Sevi Raman, one of the great physicists of our country. Okay, now let us come back to the lesson that is the elixir of life. Before going to the lesson, let us have a little glance towards this particular word. The topic, the title of the topic. What is the title that is the elixir of life? What do you mean by elixir? This is the main important thing. Why this particular author, that is this, uh, Sir C. V. Raman, why he had taken this particular word? Instead of that, he can he might have taken another word. But why he has taken this particular word? This is the main important thing, and we have to know. Okay, first thing, what is mean by elixir? Elixir means divine. Amrita, what we can call as nectar. Okay, this is divine Amrita, what we can call uh, nectar. And here, Dr. Sir C. V. Raman was comparing to the elixir to what? That is the main important thing we have to look in this lesson. Throughout this lesson, author is going to describe the importance of water. Okay, then the importance of rain fed tanks then causes for soil erosion then prevention of soil erosion these main things we are going to discuss in this particular lesson. Okay. Before going to the lesson, let us discuss in general. Okay. I think uh, we, all, we all are familiar with the first and second world war. Isn't it? First and second world war. Okay. We are very much familiar to these wars. Okay. These wars has been taken place. Why? What are the causes? Already you might have known. 
that is it may be political causes it may be economical causes or it may be social causes or else it may be a competition of uh, what we call okay uh, this uh, first and second world war has been taken place because of the reason it may be political causes it may be economical causes or it may be social causes so if in future if in future the third world war has been taken place just in general if the third world war has been taken place it is for the sake of water see here causes are different okay and if the third world war has been taken place if just we are taking an example that is if the third world world war has been taken place it is for the sake of water why because of water why because of water of course it is a very common thing and we are taking it for very granted we are not giving much importance to this thing that is why here sir c v raman is giving much importance to this most potent thing he was giving much importance what we are taking for the granted what we are taking for the granted but here he was highlighting the particular thing he was highlighting and he was giving a much importance he was giving much importance to the water of course we have to give because if water is not there if water is not there do the life exist that will be the biggest question mark if water is not there do the life exist it is very simple thing if water is there then definitely life will be not there then definitely life will be not there so if we wanted to survive if we wanted to survive we need water we need water and it is most important thing what we are taking for a granted we should give the much importance to this nowadays we are not giving the much importance take for example take for example uh, we used to oh, use the water in our day to day life every day we, we are with babes at our home for drinking and uh, for washing clothes for whatever for taking a bath for several reasons we are using the water okay and for drinking what we do we used to buy the mineral water isn't it we used to buy a mineral water from outside why during olden days there was no mineral water pure water was there during the olden days but now there was no purity why it is because of man man who has become a very much selfish and he was not giving much importance to the water and he was spoiling the water because of this reason nowadays water has completely become a polluted it has become completely polluted so that we are seeking what is that the mineral water for drinking we are seeking this mineral water okay let us go to the lesson see since from many years ago thousands years ago man was seeking this divine amrita he was seeking that divine amrita and the, he was thinking that if we had this divine amrita we will be what immortal we will be immortal so that he was running behind this divine amrita and this author has compared an imaginary elixir 
imaginary Elisa. Author has called this Amrita as imaginary Elisa. And he was calling the real elixir of life to what? The real elixir of life. What is the real elixir of life? That is none other than a plain water. A plain water. Okay, let us go to the uh, lesson. Man has through the ages sought in a way for imaginary elixir of life, the divine Amrita to confer immortality. But the true elixir of life lies near to our hands, for it is the commonest of all liquids, a plain water. That is what I said. This plain water leads us to the life. This plain water leads us to the life. As I said, if water is not there, then life will no existence. There was no existence of life. So if we wanted to survive, if we wanted to survive, we need water. We need water. Okay. Because of this water, nowadays, people are, what they are doing? What they are doing? Just they are taking for this it granted. Hey, it is just water now. That's okay. Leave it. We are taking for it granted. We are not knowing the greatness. We are not knowing the importance of water. What it means. What is the real thing. What it can play the best role in our life. Of course, if water, because of water only, till today we are alive. Because of water. As we know, the five elements. What we can call Panchabhuta. That is Panchabhuta. What we can sometimes call it as Panchabhuta. In that sky and the earth, then the fire, then water, then air. Okay. See, in that five elements also, this water is includes. Since from ancient days. Since from ancient days. See, in Vedas also, regarding water, one sloga was there. That is, It is there written in Rig Veda. It is there written in Rig Veda. What is that? Apavantram Amritamapsu. It means, it means there is a nectar. There is a nectar in water. The exactly same thing was said by C. B. Raman. It was said during the olden days. Thousands of years ago, it was said that in the water there is a nectar. The exactly same thing here, C. V. Raman was saying. That means he was giving the much importance to the water. This is the importance of water. The next, I remember one day standing on the line which separates the Levant Desert from the Valley of Nile in is it here? C. V. Raman was sharing one of his the light incident that was he was standing. In a line which separates a Liban desert and the valley of Nile. One side there was a Liban desert, and the other side there was a valley of Nile. Here, when we see this particular word, that is desert, that means absence of water. Do the water exist in deserts? 
Do the water exist in the desert? No, it's highly impossible. There exists only the sand. Only sand will be there. Apart from sand, a single speck of grass. Single speck, speck in the sense, a pinch, a small pinch. A small pinch of grass was not there. Why? Because, because there is no water. There is no water, so that there is no single speck of grass on or yet a single living thing was not there. Where in Liban desert. Okay. The other hand, the very next, just a line separates this the, the valley of Nile and the Liban desert. Here a fertile land was there. Completely fertile land. Why? Because water was there. Because of water, a fertile land was there and also all the living creatures were there. All the living creatures and every kind of vegetation. Every kind of vegetation was there. Why? Because, because of water. See, by looking at these two examples only, we can come to know that what is the importance of water. Here, water is not there. Water is not there so that a single living creature was not there. And here, that is the valley of Nile, where a fertile land was there. Densely populated area was there with all kinds of living creature and with all kinds of vegetation. Why? Because, because water is present there. This is the Okay. I remember one day standing on the line which separates the Levant Desert from the Valley of Nile in Egypt. One side was visible a sea of billowing sand with a speck of, without a speck of green or a single living thing anywhere visible on it. While on the other side lay one of the greenest and the most fertile and densely populated areas to be found anywhere on the earth, teeming with the life and vegetation. What made this wonderful difference? Why? It is the water of river Nile flowing down to the Mediterranean from its source of a couple of thousands miles away. See here, the river Nile. The river Nile was flowing from the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, down to the Mediterranean and since from how many years? Thousands years miles away. Thousands miles away. So that here a fertile land was there and all the living creature was there and all the kinds of vegetation was there and densely populated area to be found were near to the valley of Nile. Okay. Let us see the next. Okay, in these two paragraphs, we come to know that the importance of water. Okay, then next. Geologist tells us that the entire soil of the Nile Valley is the creation of the river itself. It was brought down as the finest silt in its floodwaters from the highlands of Abyssinia and from remote central Africa and lay down through the ages in the trough through which the Nile flows into the sea. Egypt, in fact, was made by its river. Its ancient civilization was created and sustained by the life-giving waters, which come down year after year with unfailing regularity. Okay, here, author A was saying that, author was saying that the river Nile, which was flowing, which was flowing, it has brought 
a finest scent. Finest scent. Scent in the sense, a suspension of soil. Okay. It was, it was bringing a finest scent while it was flowing. While it was flowing from where? From Abyssinia and as well as Central Africa. The river Nile was bringing that silt from there, from Abyssinia and as well as some remote part of Central Africa. Okay. Then here he was talking about the Egypt civilization. Egypt civilization. Okay. This was the during the year of 3100. That is BC. Before Christ. That means almost 30 centuries ago. The Egyptian civilization was exists when during before the 30th centuries ago it was there exist. Why? It is because of water. Why? Because the river Nile was flowing there. Since from thousand years ago the Egyptian civilization was existence. Because of water. That is the Nile water. This shows. This shows. If water is there. Then life exists. If water was there. Then life automatically exists. Then next. I give this example. And could give many others to emphasize. That. This common substance which we take for granted in our everyday life is the most potent and the most wonderful thing on the face of our earth. As already I said, as already I said, this water, we are taking for it as granted. We are taking water as granted, but here author is saying that it is most important thing on the surface of our earth. The entire planet, the whole universe, in the whole universe, this water is most important thing. But we are taking it for granted. It has played a role of vast significance in shaping the course of the earth's history and continues to play the leading role in the drama of life on the surface of our planet. That means for every living creature, for every living creature, water is must. If a small insect wanted to survive, then it needs a water. If a small plant wanted to survive, it needs a water. If a human being wanted to survive, then he also requires the water. If the animal wanted to survive, then it also requires the water. That is the thing. That is the thing. It plays a best role. Best role. And vital role in every living creature. On the surface of our entire earth, on the whole universe, in the whole universe, this water plays a best role and a vital role in the shaping and shaping the life of all the creatures. And next, there is nothing which adds so much to the beauty of the countryside as water, be it just a little stream tricking over the rocks or a little pond by the wayside where the cattle quench their thirst of an inn. Here, he was going just to the rural areas. In rural areas, we can find stream, pond, well, lake, such kinds of things we can find in rural areas. Okay, these things 
whatever it may be, whether it is pond, whether it is stream, whether it is lake, these things are adding, what they are doing, they are adding the extra beauty. They are adding the extra beauty to the nature. They are adding the extra beauty. How? If these tanks, these stream or pond or whatever the lake, if it fills with water, it looks very beautiful. If you go through the uh, these things in a rural areas, you will come to know what is the real beauty of nature when these things fills with the water. And sometimes even the cattle, cattle in the sense, cattle in the sense, whatever it will be, we can call a cow, sheep and all. Those will quench their thirst. In this water ponds, whatever it may be, whether it is pond, whether it is stream, they will quench their thirst in the evening. The rain fed tanks that are so common in South India, alas, often so sadly neglected in their maintenance, are a cheering sign when they are full. Here he is talking about the rain fed tanks. He was talking about rain fed tanks. These are plays a vital role in South Indian agriculture. These tanks will play a vital role in South Indian agriculture and Pity to say that these are maintaining, maintenance was not good. They are badly maintained. Badly maintained. That means what we are doing? We are neglecting. What we are doing? We are neglecting these things. That is the rain fed tanks. If these tanks are full, these will be like cheering sight. If these tanks are full with the rain water, these will be the cheering sight. But pity to say we are neglecting these things. That is the rain fed tanks. The next. They are of course, shallow, but this is less evident since the water is silt laden and throws the light back and the bottom does not therefore show up. These tanks play a vital role in a South Indian agriculture. Some of these tanks are surprisingly large and it is beautiful sight to see the sunrise or sunset over one of them. Water is a landscape may be compared to the eyes in a human face. It reflects the mood, mood of the hour being bright and gay when the sun shines, turning to dark and gloomy when the sky, sky is overcast. Again, he was uh, highlighting this rain fed tanks. As I said, this plays a vital role in South Indian agriculture. Because, why? Because this our South Indian agriculture was, especially our South Indian agriculture was depends upon seasonal rainfall. Okay, during the rainy season, these tanks will be filled with water, that is the rain water. Okay, when these tanks are full, they are like cheering sight. But, pity to say, we are neglecting these tanks and these are very shallow. Of course, somewhere there, they are pretty large. Not every tank is very large, but some are large in size. Almost the rain fed tanks were shallow. And these rain fed tanks were filled with silt. Along with the rain water, it was filled with silt too. And because of this silt, it looks like it was a deep. But actually, it was not a deep. It is just a shallow. Because of the silt laden, 
it looks like it was a b and these rain fed tanks looks like very beautiful very beautiful when sun rises how in the morning if we go to the rural areas there if we stand near to these rain fed tanks what we can call a stream pond and all if we stands near to this early in the morning when the sun rises during the sun rises if we stand near to this rain fed tanks it looks a very beautiful and even when the sun is setting down then also it looks a quite beautiful it adds extra beauty to the nature it adds extra beauty to the nature and even sir c v raman was compared sir c v raman was compared human eyes human eyes were compared as i said water in a landscape may be compared to the eyes in a human face see human eyes in a face see these human eyes may compared to the water sometimes if we open our eyes if we open up our eyes we can see the light we can see the brightness we can identify the brightness but we can close the eyes then everything will be dark and gloomy isn't it if we open up our eyes it will look a very bright if we closes up our eyes then it will be dark and blue at the same time at the same time if if the light was there if the light was there if the sky is completely clear if the sky the entire sky is completely clear then it looks a very beautiful if the sky was covered with clouds if the same sky was covered with cloud then it looks dark and gloomy that is why arthur was compared the water to the human eyes on the human face then one of the most remarkable facts about water is its power to carry silt or finely divided soil in suspension this is the origin of the characteristic color of the water in rain fed tanks this color varies with the nature of the earth in the catchment area and is most vivid immediately after a fresh inflow flowing rain see here the rain fed tanks will spill with rain rain water already as said okay this will changes its color very soon when the rain falls why because of again silt because the rain fed tanks were fills with the silt okay then when the uh, rain heavy rainfall was there then extra water will add into this tanks and it will mix up with this silt too then automatically the water color may changes and the continuous flowing was there when the continuous flowing of water is there then automatically it becomes bright it becomes bright in a color then swiftly flowing water can carry fairly large and heavy particles as i said see water is most powerful thing don't take it for granted it is the most powerful thing because it can carry many things not only many things even human beings also it can take if flood comes the already uh, some examples were there for example kerala for example kodagu such kinds of examples were there because of flood the entire town the entire town has vanished away this is the disaster this is the disasters see water is the most powerful thing and while it was flowing while it was flowing it can carry many particles many particles in it why because of high density because of high density it can carry many particles in it 
The finest particles, however, remain floating within the liquid in spite of the greater density and are, of course, extremely small, but their number is also great. They may be small, or the particles may be small, but in number it is large. That this is the power of water. It can carry many things in it. Okay. Next. The flow of water has undoubtedly played a great part and a beneficent one in the geological process by which the soil, soil on the earth's surface has been formed from the rocks of its crust. The same agency, however, under appropriate conditions can also play a destructive part and wash away the soil which is the foundation of all agriculture. And if allowed to proceed, unchecked can have the most disastrous effects on the life of the country. The problem of soil erosion is one of the serious import in various countries and especially in many parts of India. The conditions under which it occurs and the measures by which it can be checked deserve the closest study. Okay, in the next part, author is going to describing about the soil erosion. This is one of the major thing. This is one of the major thing and we can call it as a major problem which we are dealing with. That is the soil erosion. See, like water, even the soil is also important. How the water is important? In the same way, the soil is also very much important. If the soil is not there, what will be not there? Agriculture. Agriculture will be not there. Of course, we can uh, stay we can stay at home in a well furnished flat. Okay. We can stay well furnished flat or home, but we cannot do agriculture in well furnished land. Please stay, remember, we can stay in a well furnished flat or well furnished land, but we cannot do this agriculture in this well furnished land. Why? For agriculture, most important thing is soil. So, we have to think the importance of soil. What soil? What is soil? And what is the importance of soil? And how should we preserve how should we preserve this soil from getting waste? This is the thing here author is describing. So, for agriculture, as I said, for agriculture, soil is must necessary. Then to, then to, this is, this should be a fertile land. If a fertile land is there, then only a pure soil will be there. So, it will be helpful for the agriculture. It will be helpful for the agriculture. If we wanted to do this agriculture, then we need a best soil. First thing, if we wanted to live, if we wanted to live, that means if we wanted to survive, if we wanted to survive, then we need water. First thing, water. Then next, food. From where we can get the food? That is the most important thing. From where we can get the food? Again, we have to come back to this agriculture only. Right? Again, we have to come back for this agriculture. If agriculture was there, then only we can get the food to survive. So, if we wanted to survive, we need the water as well as the food. If we wanted to if you wanted to lead a life by having a good food, then we need agriculture. For this agriculture, what we need? Again, soil. Again, soil. This is the importance of soil. 
Here, author is describing the soil erosion. This pure, this pure soil is getting waste. Again, because of man. Again, because of man. Some causes were there. Even natural causes were also there. And along with the natural causes, some artificial causes, that means man-made causes were also there while getting this soil erosion. So, this soil erosion, for, the, for this, what are the main causes? Why it occurs? And when the soil erosion occurs, what will be the impact? See, if one thing was happened, if this, this soil erosion was happened, then automatically some impacts will be there. That means effects. And of course, this uh, positive effects will be not there. Only negative effect will be there. Because, because we are wasting this pure soil. We are wasting this pure soil so that we are getting, of course, the negative effect. This author is going to describe in the next part that is the soil erosion. So, uh, for this soil erosion uh, causes, causes for soil erosion, that is uh, whatever it may be, whether it is man-made causes or the natural causes for soil erosion and also the prevention of soil erosion. The prevention of soil erosion and what will be the effects of the soil erosion, we can continue in the next class. So, today already we have studied about this importance of water and how the water plays a best role and a vital role in a leading of the entire world. The entire world. Okay. This was leading the best role and this was playing a best role and this was playing a vital role in entire world for shaping for shaping the entire creature, the life of entire creature, it was playing a best role, what we can call as the real elixir of life. The real elixir of life. As I said, in Sanskrita there was a shloka that is, in Sanskrita there was a shloka that is Apavantram Amritam Apsu. That means there was a nectar. There was a nectar, there was Amrita in which in this plain water, the real, the real elixir of life, that is the water. In this water, the real elixir, that is the real Amrita was existed. But we are neglecting this. We are neglecting and we are running behind this imaginary elixir that is the divine Amrita. We are running behind this divine Amrita instead of, instead of this real elixir of life. This real elixir of life can save our life, not this divine Amrita. Can we get this divine Amrita anywhere? No. For that, we cannot get this divine Amrita anywhere throughout the world. But we can get this pure water the plain water, in everywhere, in everywhere and it can save our life. Because of this water, we exist today. If we are today here as alive, it is because of water. So, we should give the much importance to the water. That is what C.B. Raman was saying. That is, the real elixir of life is nothing but the plain water. So, we have studied about this today, class. In the next class, let us study the causes for soil erosion and then what will be the effects of soil erosion and also the prevention of soil erosion in the next class. See you in the next class. Thank you.